Great TCGs can be played in a number of different ways in a number of different formats, and Lorcana is no different. It's true. The most common way to play right now seems to be 1v1, which we absolutely love, but our favorite way to play is in a 2v2 format we call Two-Headed Dragon. You know, like the Hydra from Hercules. Lorcana is designed first to play one-on-one, -on -one, with two players racing to gather 20 lore. But the team behind Lorcana had multiplayer in mind from the beginning, designing the rules to work well if the game is expanded to three players and beyond. This game plays awesomely multiplayer. We've played six player games in this game with no alterations to the rules other than you pass the turn to the left instead of to your opponent, right? You know, when you get people together to play, friends or family, you all want to play together and you don't want people sitting out. There's a reason that Commander, a four player format, is the most popular format in Magic the Gathering. In Lorcana, you can easily play with three or more players without changing the rules at all. You're all just racing to get to 20 lore first. However, our favorite way to play is two versus two in a format we like to call Two-Headed Dragon, with the following two primary rules. First, to win, both players on a team have to reach 20 lore independently. And second, teams take their turns simultaneously. This means they ready, set, and draw at the same time, and then can collectively sequence their actions. This means that there's some really interesting sequencing and actions you and your teammate can do on your turn. For example, cards like Coconut Basket and Shield of Virtue can affect any character, so you can use them to heal and protect your teammate's characters. Ooh, challenge your broom with Mickey. Ch then I'm going to exert an ink for Flounder, and I'll heal your Mickey Perfect. with my Coconut Basket. He is now safe. And then I'll go ahead and quest with Jasmine. I'll go ahead and... Make sure she's not going to get awesome. challenged. So However, effects that only apply to your cards cannot affect your teammate. For example, Bodyguard can only be used to protect your cards and not your teammates. There's one more rule we need to mention, and that is that players can gain more than 20 lore. Because cards like Aladdin and Rapunzel can steal lore from your opponents, it only makes sense for them to build up a buffer. So if they reach 20 before their teammate, it reduces their chance of being knocked out of their win condition. This also future-proofs this format in the event that we eventually see lore as a resource, which is something that we saw hinted at on a Twitter Q&A with the game developers. Now there is a way to play that once a player hits 20 lore, they can check that box and they no longer need to track it. It just really depends how you wanna play. The rules of this format can lead to some fun strategies. Sometimes one player on a team focuses on questing for lore and the other player focuses on challenging opposing characters. Then they switch. Sometimes a team will focus on keeping a single opponent from questing in order to prevent the team from winning, because if they can keep one player from reaching 20 lore, the entire team can't win. In multiplayer formats lead themselves to different types of deck building. Cards like Steal from the Rich, Aladdin, and Rapunzel, which affect all opponents, are much better when you are playing against more than one person. And as we mentioned, there are also cards that will allow you to assist your teammates' characters, which are decent in 1v1, but are even better when you have a teammate. So this format allows four people to play Lorcana simultaneously with less waiting and more playing. Instead of waiting for three people to take their turn after you finish yours, you only have to wait for the opposing team to go, and then it's your team's turn, and then your opposing team's turn again, which leaves you just enough time to strategize with your teammate between turns. And you can also be really flexible with this format, playing 3v3 or even 2v2v2, depending on how many people you want involved in your game. Yeah, and it plays just the same way. So some people ask us, why do we call it Two-Headed Dragon? And it draws its inspiration from a format in Magic called Two-Headed Giant. The biggest difference is in Magic, players share a life point total, where in Two-Headed Dragon, players collect lore independently. They don't share a lore total. And so for this reason, we thought we needed to differentiate the name, but pay homage to the original format in Magic the Gathering. And to Hercules with Hydra. And to Hercules with Hydra. <laughs> Defeat each head on its own. <laughs> so what do you think about this Two-Headed Dragon format? One thing we're really excited about is to see what kind of deck list people come up with to take advantage of the rules in this multiplayer format. If you come up with one that you think is fun, drop it in the comments because we can't wait to see it. Sign, Sign off, off catchphrase. Catch